Hi there, I'm board certified dermatologist and skin wellness expert, Dr. Cynthia Bailey. And today I'm gonna to talk about antioxidants. Free radicals and the summer sun. What's the story? Your skin, when exposed to ultraviolet light, suffers an energy transfer that results in free radicals. So the energy of the light, depending upon where it's absorbed in your skin, is transferred to things in your skin that are capable of absorbing that ultraviolet energy. Those include melanin, a protective mechanism, but unfortunately, the absorption can also be transferred to nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are your DNA and your RNA. They are precious. You want them to be in good form, and when they're not in good form, bad things happen. And that's where free radicals and antioxidants intersect for you. So antioxidants are capable of neutralizing free radicals before they have a chance to damage your precious structures. Free radicals have an extra electron and they're desperately seeking a pair. In that desperate search, they may grab it from something that you don't want it grabbed from, such as your DNA. And when they do that, they cause a damage. Most importantly, pyrimidine dimers, which are parts of your DNA, DNA that then get globbed together and unfortunately can accumulate in your skin. Antioxidants, if and when present, can prevent that from happening. In addition, free radicals, if they don't damage the DNA, they can damage proteins and important lipid membranes that are crucial for the integrity of your skin. Basically, free radicals and your skin bad. You don't want them. Antioxidants are good guys and you want your skin locked and loaded with antioxidants to grab the free radicals before they have a chance for their misdeeds. Free radicals can also turn on matrix metalloproteinase, an enzyme that is responsible for degrading collagen and also contributes to the inability of your skin to make good collagen to repair damage. All of the consequences of free radical damage on your skin are cumulative. They interact with each other, so damaged fibroblasts down here don't produce good collagen, which talk to keratinocytes up here, which don't behave well, the barrier is weakened here. And basically, everything is unwell in the village of your skin when free radicals have had a chance to do their thing. That's why you want your skin locked and loaded with antioxidants to prevent all of that misadventure from starting in the very beginning. Your skin has inherent mechanisms to try to repair, prevent, and protect itself, but they wear out pretty quickly. So the DNA damage that happens from free radicals can be repaired by your skin with a repair mechanism, but that mechanism is slow. It has enzymes that cut out the little pyrimidine dimers so that the DNA is normal again, but again, that process is slow. When your skin is damaged with UVB, it sometimes damages the cells in the epidermis so badly that they're called sunburn cells, and your skin has a way to just sort of jettison those guys and get rid of those, but again, that process is slow. Your skin has its own antioxidant reserve to try to protect itself when ultraviolet light hits it or other stimuli that are capable of generating free radicals such as pollution and the consequences of burning of fossil fuels. Those also can generate free radicals. But the most important free radical generator is ultraviolet light when it comes to skin physiology. So your skin has an antioxidant system, but that antioxidant system is rapidly depleted in the, in the presence of ultraviolet light. It lasts maybe 10 minutes to 40 minutes and then it's depleted and left to the consequences of ultraviolet energy transfer to chromophores and the generation of free radicals. In the presence of ultraviolet light, your skin has some protective mechanisms that it tries to employ. The first of which is a tan. When the light hits your skin, your melanocytes are stimulated to produce pigment, but that takes about 24 hours. In addition, the melanin pigment that is in your skin is 
distributed differently and you develop a tan color more immediately. And again, that's your body's way of trying to protect itself. It's UVB, the summer sunburn ray, that causes the formation of melanin in the epidermis. UVA, on the other hand, causes what we call immediate pigment darkening, which is a redistribution of the melanin that's already in your skin. It happens within an hour or so, and it's short-lived, but it's why you get a more immediate tan when you're exposing yourself to the sun. The more sustained tan that will last a couple of weeks is induced by UVB and the turning on of tyrosinase, an enzyme in the melanocytes that generates pigment production. Any tan, however, signals that your skin has been subjected to enough ultraviolet light that it feels it's in danger and needs to uh, protect itself with the redistribution and production of melanin. Another protective mechanism that's interesting and that occurs from UVB is keratinization or hyperkeratinization. So if you've ever noticed that your skin feels a little bit rough and looks a little leathery when you're getting a lot of sun exposure, it's true, it is. And it's your skin's way of trying to protect itself because that thickened dead skin cell layer will scatter sunlight before it manages to get in here to your vital structures. So your skin's protective mechanisms include melanin and hyperkeratinization. But that's all. So given how sensitive your skin is to ultraviolet radiation and that the consequences of ultraviolet radiation are cumulative and will play out over many years, you want to give your skin some help when you're out in the sun. So of course we know you want to sun protect, you want to wear good sunscreen and try to avoid extensive exposure to ultraviolet rays, but you can do something else. You can actually add antioxidants to your skincare routine. They're tricky though, because antioxidants, by definition, oxidize readily, which is why they're grabbing the free radicals, and formulating them into products that are stable is tricky. You can't just read a label that says there are antioxidants, you know, CoQ10, ubiquinone, vitamin E and A, green tea, and actually expect that those antioxidants are still active when you're applying them to your skin. They have to be formulated well and by good formulation chemists in order to do anything. And it's even tricky mixing them into sunscreens because many of the organic sunscreen filters don't play well with others when it comes to a formulation. And when you're starting to mix antioxidants and organic filters in there, the whole thing is tricky business. And so my preference is that you layer antioxidants in your skincare routine, antioxidant products that you know contain a lot of the right amount of antioxidants to do the best work for your skin and to help build your antioxidant reserve to protect what's precious. So what are those antioxidants? Well, first and foremost, my absolute favorite is green tea. The ECGC antioxidant polyphenols of green tea are very effective at helping to scavenge free radicals and mitigate much of the oxidative damage that occurs in your skin as a consequence of ultraviolet exposure. The ECGC polyphenols in green tea have also been shown to help quite a bit at reducing the number of skin cancers that are created as a consequence of free radical damage from ultraviolet exposure. And they're also anti-inflammatory, so they help quiet redness from any number of causes. So green tea is my absolute favorite antioxidant to add to skincare. It's also easy and soothing, so all skin types can tolerate green tea. Another great antioxidant to add to your skincare is vitamin C. Vitamin C is also well substantiated by good scientific study to benefit the skin as an antioxidant. Now again, it's tricky to formulate. It has to be in an acid pH, it has to be a high concentration to do anything, but you can accumulate vitamin C antioxidant reserve in your skin just as you can accumulate green tea polyphenol antioxidant reserve in your skin. And studies have shown that sun exposure to skin is less harmful in the presence of a robust antioxidant reserve in the skin. Some of the other benefits of vitamin C, it's been shown to decrease the metal metalloproteinases that damage skin collagen and that inhibit formation of good fibrous collagen in your skin. It's been shown to diminish the sunburn cell 
reaction in your skin. It's been shown to retard the immunosuppression that occurs when your skin is exposed to ultraviolet light. So in addition to causing cancer, ultraviolet light causes a suppression of the mechanisms that your skin uses to take good care of itself. And vitamin C topical application has been shown to diminish that. Vitamin C also reduces the activation of tyrosinase, so it helps to inhibit hyperpigmentation from ultraviolet exposure. And that's helpful, especially for people who suffer from melasma and have to employ everything possible to diminish the irregular and disfiguring hyperpigmentation from that condition. And vitamin C is also a cofactor for the enzyme that produces collagen. Other antioxidants to consider adding to your skincare routine include vitamin E. But you have to be careful with vitamin E because it's a sensitizer, meaning it's an allergen. And I've seen some absolutely dramatic and glorious rashes from topical vitamin E. So you want to use a small amount of vitamin E but it has been shown to help mitigate some of the damage from ultraviolet exposure that occurs from free radicals. And vitamin A is another important antioxidant and vitamin to add to your skincare routine. And you can do that in the form of retinol at nighttime, which is my favorite way to add vitamin A to your skincare routine. The bottom line with antioxidants is that they're helpful when created in well-formulated preparations. They can boost the antioxidant reserve in your skin to help mitigate or diminish the damage of free radicals that are the consequence of ultraviolet light exposure, as well as the consequence of just general metabolic activities in your skin and exposure to other toxins such as pollution and the burning of fossil fuels. They are not a replacement for sunscreen. You still need sunscreen and sun protection, but they can add an additional way for your skin to have a healthy summer without increasing the consequences of sun damage. I recommend that you layer them in your sunscreen routine. So complete skincare is cleanse, correct, hydrate, protect. Layer them in your correcting step. Finish your skincare routine in the day with application of your sunscreen. Please look at my sun protection page to Make sure that you have your sun protection strategy all in order. And so please go ahead and go outside, have a good time in the sun, and know that you're taking really good care of your skin by wearing sunscreen, employing good sun protection practices, and layering a few of the best antioxidants in your skincare routine. So I hope that helped. It was a little bit sciency. If you found it helpful, I really appreciate a thumbs up. If you find this information useful, please consider subscribing. It absolutely makes my day. That's the red button down there. And if you have any friends that you think might be interested in this content, please go ahead and share, and I'd love to hear your comments. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.